The fifth bike in my five bikes in five day series where I unbox, assemble, and ride all in one day for a day one impression. There's no room for error, whatever happens happens, and I saved this for last. This is the Hemiway Escape, an e-bike styled like a moped, but may actually be a moped. This design's going to appeal to people like me because I like mopeds. I like scooters, I've had old classic Vespas, I've had Honda Passports, classic Honda mopeds. And that's what this reminds me of. So right away, it's up my alley. And fate lined this up for me because my dad had asked me about Hemiway. Saw him on Facebook, and the next day, I got an email. They wanted me to take a look at this bike. They actually gave me a choice. I could have reviewed any of their bikes. But the second I saw this, I knew this was the one. Since Hemiway is new to me, I like to look at packaging because you can learn a lot about a company by the way they package their products. This is fully branded and a nice looking picture of the Escape on the box. And coincidentally, I started this 5 bikes in 5 days with the lightest e-bike I had ever reviewed. This, the heaviest. 115 pounds of gross weight, the actual bike itself, 86.9. Opened up, this is nicely packaged. There's lots of foam to keep things safe, and it doesn't look like anything jiggled out of place and not much to assemble. Ooh, fancy. And check this out, they even padded the accessory kit. There's Hemiway branded tape sealing it. I appreciate good branding. I've spared you the grunting noises as I removed this almost 90 pound bike from the box, but I wanted to preserve this box since it's a review bike. Assembly requirements, front wheel, handlebar, and pedals. Let's look at the accessory kit and see how generous they were. A little damage here, also some top branding. And right off, look at this, a Hemiway hat dibs. There's a 15 millimeter wrench, bossy. And the front axle, and we'll come back to this axle, a multi-tool, and this is nice. It has wood side, that's a very good touch, upscale. Pedals, these are alloy, not plastic. And two plastic caps, these go on the ends of that front axle. The manual, talk about upscale, it has a pearl sheen, and I'm not joking, there's a pearl finish. Hands down the best bike manual I've ever seen, and it's bike specific too, lots of detailed info, torque specs. Curiously though, no mention of that front axle, which I'll be coming back to. There's also a headlight, big and beefy, a dual LED model. And finally, a Hemiway branded charger. This is a rebrand. It's actually a D-Power. I'm familiar with this model, 54.6 volts and 2 amps. A nice haul for an accessory kit, and again, dibs on that hat. And one more thing about that manual, lots of good info here, like weight limits, power output, even handlebar reach. When have you ever seen handlebar reach on an e-bike manual? Assembly went mostly well. Handlebars, easy. However, when it got time to put on the front wheel, now, I didn't remember this. It was only when I was going back through this footage that I noticed that I specifically pointed to that plastic fork spacer thing that goes between the dropouts, but then I just kept going. So when it got time to put on the front wheel at that axle, first there was no info, at least that I saw, that told me which spacer went on which side. There's a long one and a shorter one, and I was kind of confused. I couldn't get anything to line up. And on top of that, the spacers protruded half an inch too far out between the dropouts. Well, it turns out that's because the fork was bent. Remember that spacer I pointed out? Somehow it was bent. There was no chipping damage on the box, so I can only assume this happened before it went into the box. Now, to their credit, Hemiway responded with seven emails and three different people trying to get this worked out before I eventually used a tool to spread those arms apart. And by the way, that spacer goes on the non-rotor side, the long one. That one struggle aside, it was pretty quick to get ready. Look at this, classic handlebars. There's so much to note, I'm just going to jump right into the component rundown. Vinyl, leather look, comfort, grips, one half grip on the right side. That's to accommodate the twist throttle. And I call these Mickey Mouse shifters. They're cheap, but they work well with twist throttles. Brakes, thankfully hydraulic. This is almost 90 pounds, so it's going to need some help stopping. Next to the full comfort grip on the left, the computer control. Easy thumb reach to get to everything, and it's simple. And there's a bike bell. Centered on the top bar of the bars, the computer display has a large monochrome backlit screen. It shows up a lot better in the day than it looks like it does here. It displays the battery level in the upper left hand corner and shows which of the five pedal assist modes the bike is in. It also has a speedo, a trip meter, a ride time meter, and odometer options down low. Up at the actual speedometer part can be switched between either real time average or max. There's also a headlamp indicator for the decently bright headlight, a taillight too that flashes while braking. Cables cleanly routed and well managed and these mount points on the head tube that's for the available front rack. The suspension fork for this bike has a preload adjustment and a manual lockout and roughly 40 millimeters of travel and as I learned deceptively hard to bend tubes. The front wheel from a distance looks like it should be 23 or 24 inches, but it's actually a 20 inch with knobby tires. They're 20 by 4.0 fat tires. They have a reflective sidewall ring and they're made by Kenda. 
And speaking of made, well made, these six star rims and the hubs sealed bearings. All the cabling routes into rubber grommets built into this frame and this step through moped body. The down tube of which houses the flush mount battery. I'll show battery removal in a bit, but there's a charge port down on the low right side of the down tube. The back half of this alloy frame also moped style and it has a bench type saddle. The branding on the back that says Hemiway, this is just like the old Honda mopeds. And there's that wood covering on the rear rack, which is tubes on tubes, plenty strong. Everything is built strong and motorcycle caliber, including the dual rear shocks, which are also coilover. The fenders are plastic, very thick, and they cover the front and the rear wheel. The drivetrain has some bike parts, like the Shimano Altus derailleur and the 7-speed freewheel. Beside that, the motor, a rear hub motor 750 watts. Up front, there's a single chain ring with 170 millimeter crank arms and those pedals we saw earlier, Alloy Welgo branded. Whether you call this an e-bike or a moped, mopeds had pedals to start them, but honestly, they were really only there to skirt licensing requirements. And to me, this is definitely more moped than bike. The heavy weight, the motorcycle-like suspension, they make it stable and smooth even on bumpy alleys. Even the performance, I remember you couldn't pedal a moped at top speed. And this bike, or e-moped, whatever you want to call it, it quickly outsteps the need to do so. And as you can see, the escape is fast. This is in miles per hour and accurate, an easy 28. And look at my shadow for the pedal cadence, because it will scale, but it's practically, at least at speed, to keep the motor engaged. But check this out, see my legs not moving there? Throttle only also allows top speed, making this the first and only e-bike that I've ever ridden that was able to do so. And by the way, this is locked at 20, 22 miles an hour out of the box. I unlocked it to get top speed, which means at points I can hit 30, 31 miles per hour on flat ground. The Escape digs right into turns, it just wants to go. It's balance and performance working together. I'll talk about cadence in a minute, but I found that Pedal Assist 3, if I wanted to pedal, it meshed well for riding around at 17 to 18 miles per hour. If I dropped it down to 2, that was good for 14 miles per hour and a perfect amount of light resistance. And often on e-bikes I talk about the run out of pedal effect, and on the Escape anything over 18 is kind of futile, it's not run out of pedal, but shockingly, I found out if I gave it my all, I could reach speeds up to 35 going downhill and pedaling hard. And I know it was me, because when I quit pedaling, even with the hill assist, it would slow to about 32. And that was a nicely stable 35. Performance rundown, the Escape can be ridden as a bike without any pedal assistance, and here you can see, even on flat ground, it's usable, and I can work through the gears and even stand to accelerate if I'm in high gear. Effort requirements vary greatly, even on flat ground. Remember, this is almost a 90-pound bike. But using the power, everything gets easy. Those five pedal assist levels, and here they are. Level 1, up to 10 miles per hour. Level 2, 14, and it steps further, 18, 20, and then 28 plus. And of course, as we've already seen, the throttle works through the entire range. Here's a shot of my leg cadence at 28 miles per hour, and this is pedaling hard enough to feel resistance on the pedals. A quick note about pedaling position, so freeze frame, see how I'm sitting here, because this is a wide bike. This is that motorcycle type body. My legs are jutted outwards, and I don't know that this pedaling position is all that good for the knees, so if you're someone that wants to ride like an e-bike, rather than a moped. Worth a note, as is the height, because the seat is where it is, and that's 32 inches off the ground. Motor sounds not really discernible because of the fat tires and the rubbing rotor from where I struggled with the wheel. I fixed that. Some e-bikes have cadence sensor issues, meaning there's lag from when you quit pedaling to when the motor cuts off, or when you start pedaling and it starts up. Milliseconds on the escape, meaning they did a really good job. The power stops when you want it to stop and starts when you want it to start. The suspension fork does its job too, keeping things smooth up front, as does the rear. Those dual shocks, they are impressively smooth. And I was impressed with my job. Lining up the camera here, not so proud that the police were waiting to tell me that I was in a restricted area. Cue my action shots, a camera angle where I was trying to show how much fun this is and the nimbleness of this e-bike, moped, e-bike. Of all the e-bikes I've ridden, this is definitely the most stable and I would say overall the best performing. Of course, this style, it appeals to me. Now, it may not appeal to you. If you like scooters and mopeds, you're probably going to like it. If you don't, you think they're nerdy, then maybe you won't. Weight should also be a big factor. This is almost 90 pounds, so it's not easy to move or carry around. So if you live upstairs in an apartment or you're trying to put this in an RV, that could be something you might want to think about. I started this video by going back and forth on is this an e-bike or is it an electric moped and after the first ride I'm more in the electric moped mindset 
But legally, a moped, at least in my state, is a bike, so it's also a bike. And by the way, those hydraulic disc brakes, Hemiway branded, rotors, 180mm front and rear. So, bike. But also, definitely a moped. I mean, it has motorcycle caliber construction. I mean, look at this pivot. Beefy. But there's discreteness, too. The battery easily removes from the down tube. There's a charge indicator on the battery. I'm not sure why that's there, because it's hidden when it's in the down tube. And the markings, 48 volt, 14 amp hour, which got me 23.1 miles on this first ride, 98% of which was at max pedal assist and full throttle. One note about the end battery output. Usually, one bar starts flashing before the bike runs out of power. On the Hemiway Escape, one bar means you have about five miles left. There is no flashing, and check this out e-bike guts. And there you have it, my day one with the Hemiway Escape, and I'm in love. I'll follow up soon with more experience on the Escape, as well as the other bikes in the 5 Bikes in 5 Days series. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and that you're subscribed and you have the notification bell active. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks so much for watching Kev Central, and have a great day.